like to tell you a little bit about our guest demo artist tonight. Uh, Leslie is a watercolor artist that many of us know because she is a longtime board member of the California Watercolor Association, and she's taught locally in the area for many years. I first met Leslie when she did a live watercolor demo at the national show at the Harrington Gallery in Pleasanton several years ago. Uh, I liked Leslie's loose and colorful style and her, and I particularly liked her direct painting process and her friendly personality. Uh, so I signed up for one of her watercolor classes, which was in Dublin at that time. Uh, and I learned so much from Leslie's weekly lessons and critiques. She's an awesome instructor. Um, Art has always been fundamental in Leslie's life. She has a degree in secondary art education from the University of Maryland and has focused on watercolor for more than 30 years. She captures the moment in vibrant light and color, both in plein air and in the studio. She loves transforming the ordinary into the extraordinary and reminding people of places they have been people they have met and the truly remarkable light and color in our world. Leslie is a master signature member of our club among many honors that she holds. Uh, some of you might already know this, but a master signature member has to be accepted in a total of six of our national shows. Um, and Leslie has, has done that. So that's a real accomplishment. Leslie is also a signature member of the San Diego Watercolor Society and the Missouri Watercolor Society. Her paintings are displayed at the Valley Art Gallery in Walnut Creek. Let us welcome Leslie Wilson. Thank you. Oh boy, thank you, Michelle. That was a nice introduction for sure. I'm gonna change my camera. Um, and I'm working out of my home. This is my third bedroom. And it's um, a bit crowded in here. <laughs> anyway, so I'm switching my camera so that you can see the beginnings of my drawing. Now, many of you know what I do um, in, my draw in the drawing phase of, of my painting. And I think the drawing phase, can you hear me okay? Yep. Everybody? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Um, the drawing phase is really um, a tantamount to uh, the success or um, the success of a painting, I think, because it's it's where I make the initial decisions, um, and many of you know that. So I'm just going to start drawing, and and so the decisions that I'm making here um, relative to this raku pot are that it's. Um, I'm, I'm trying to figure out where uh, I'm going to do hard edges and soft edges. And so what I do is I vary the, uh, vary the strength of my lines based upon how much contrast that I think there will be. So if I'm down in the, in the shadowed areas where the lines are not very clear, I kind of use, um, I, I vary, um, I vary the uh, intensity of my line in order to plan for where I want emphasis and play down areas in the final um, in in the final result. So I'm just kind of meandering around uh, through these weeds and berries based upon what I happen to notice. So there's not a whole lot of planning here for me, although I, I do um, pay attention to the elements, uh, the elements and principles of design um, first and foremost, because otherwise, uh, you know, the painting won't come out as well. So you can see what I've just done there so far. I have made some decisions about where I want emphasis and where I don't, and where I want some, some areas Laid down. So um, 
I hope you can see this okay, but I'm just going to continue talking and drawing for a while. And hopefully, um, these are these uh, pyrocantha berries, you know, I think that's what you said, Tom. Anyway, um, these these berries are, um, are fun. And I, I'm just following my nose based upon just what I happen to notice at any given time. And I think it's really important to trust your to trust your your what you notice, trust your intuition to say, I want these berries, I want these these patterns, I want these um, these things in my in my uh, painting because they they demonstrate the strength of um, of the design based upon what I my intuition tells me that I want to include. So if you have questions, um, I'm happy to answer them while I'm while I'm talking and while I'm drawing. So people can either um, uh, yeah. unmute. This is Michelle. Um, mm -hmm. e people can either unmute or they can put them in the chat, the questions in the chat, and I will read them to you as time permits. Good. Thank you, because I can okay. answer questions while I'm drawing. Now, also one of the one of the things that I don't want in this composition is is if you see the drawing, I mean the 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 photograph, you see this piece of weeds that goes straight up and it divides the paper in half. Um, you know, I I'll elect to put that someplace else. Um, you know, I'm not going to put it where it is because that would um, create an unnecessary uh, em um, emphasis. It would create emphasis. So I'll put it off to the side. I also like the fa fact that some of these weeds go uh, in and out of view. So again, I, I really um, emphasize in my classes to use your intuition to decide where you're going to go next. Now, you know, that's not very common, I don't think. I think most people like to uh, do excessive planning. And I'm just looking at where I might find some emphasis And I'm taking it out to the left side because I think the design demands it. And I'm coming back over. So, so far, this is what I've got. You know, the camera is making this look more square than rectangle. This is actually a rectangular um, piece of paper. And I think it's the placement of the camera that's not so hot, but I guess I'm just going to live with it. If it was a little higher, it probably would work better, but I'm just going to leave it. I should have realized that. Okay, so anyway, I'm going down here to the tomato. And I, I, I absolutely love the fact that it's I can I can expect to have a hard edge on the left side because that's clear and out in the light. And then I can go underneath it and escape into the shadow just below it. And I can also um, look for that hard edge, the shadow to the right a little bit and over to the right and then the shadow that goes up and over into the uh into the body of the raku pot so you might say well you know okay this is you know i'm just kind of meandering around looking for things that that i think i might want to include 
Now, just because I draw this doesn't mean that I need to include all of these lines in, in, in the painting. Now, also, I really love this, the shadow shape behind the shadow shape behind the, the Raku pot. So I'm, in, I'm including that in the design and also some of the, some of the uh, uh, folds in the still life that I designed. So I'm, I'm giving myself the opportunity to look for areas that would have hard, strong edges as well as areas that have soft um, connected edges. And I, I, I preach this all the time in my classes that I think you need, you need to have both. You need to have hard edges and you need to have connections between areas. And if you have too many hard edges, then it's really hard to look at. And if you have too many soft edges, then you have mush. So you can see how I've meandered around through this, this composition. And, um, you know, I might want to take another piece out here, maybe. Just thinking out loud. Looking at berries. Just kind of um, looking for clumps of things and then things that stand by themselves. Okay. Leslie, did you take the reference photo or how did you find that? I did take it. I did. I love these pots, you know, you know, Sal Valencia, he, he, yes. he, he made this pot. And I, I said, I want to borrow that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so there you go. That's what I did. Now, I don't know. I think that's about enough drawing, don't you? Mm -hmm. Did so, you grow the tomato? What? Did you grow the tomato? No, it was Sal's. <laughs> <laughs> did he grow the tomato? <laughs> yes, he did. Ah, okay. Yes, he did. And I'm just going to make a, you know, one of the things that I don't want to, I want to make the composition so that it's somewhat surprising. And, and so one of the things that I don't want to treat each side, of course, you don't want to treat each side the same way. The, this side doesn't need to be treated the same as this one. So this is smaller, this is bigger, this is hard edge, this is soft edge. All of those different things that make your eye move is what I'm, what I'm aiming for. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Enough. So a lot of times it's just scribble, you know, it's just scribble. So I'm going to start painting now. So um, like I said in my materials list, these are the colors that I use. I don't use all of them in one painting. I, I use a limited palette because um, I think that that uh, a limited palette is um, is easier to control than all of these all of these folks that use a, a palettes that are full of um, fifty pieces, fifty paint, fifty paint colors. Leslie, if there was one color that you that you used that was your go-to most often, could you say what it would be? Oh my, my of course. Um, I go to um, most of my students know this. I go to carmine, and I go to a cerulean blue, and I go to um, um, raw sienna. These three colors, one, two, three, are the ones that I end up wearing out. And so I think I'm just going to start with um, I'll start with a, a selection of of cerulean blue and some carmine 
not too much, but there you go. And, I, and my paper is almost vertical and my palette is almost vertical. So I'm just going to start with a piece of paint. Is your paper tacked down in any way? Yeah, you see the... the oh, um, I see, clip. yes, clip down, yeah, got clip. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, in fact, oh, now that you mention it, I need to put a piece of tape down here. So I always start my I always start my paintings with just a piece of paint that it that indicates an area of interest um, or um, emphasis. I don't start with washes. Um, but I, I know that a lot of people do, and uh, including people in my painting group do. And I, I can't understand how they paint, and they don't understand how I paint. So anyway, that's okay. Variety. The variety in how we... Now, I just changed a little color. I put some cerulean blue in the mix. And I, I want to make sure that I get the, um, I want to make sure that I get a um, reasonable um, amount of interest and emphasis in, um, in, in, in the lights and darks and hard edges and soft edges um, all the time. So here we go. I'm just going to pay attention to the lighted side of the top of this pot for now and work through it. I try to get the value and the color, I try to get the value and the color right or acceptable the first time, but I don't always do that. So then I end up going back in and um, I end up going back in and And, and making corrections, making uh, refinements, I should say, not corrections, it's refinements. Then I might just jump up into, jump up into a dark. So more often than, than not, I'm just looking for something that I notice that interests me. And then I evaluate it very quickly. I evaluate what I'm doing very quickly so that I can then make a decision on where to go next. So I'm always, I'm always, almost always looking at, I'm almost always um, looking at an adjacent area to go to next instead of jumping around. I like the way that I can develop the emphasis and then the play down areas by looking at one shape next to another. Now it's dangerous for me to do this so quickly because what happens is, is that I'm not letting it dry enough. So then it's hard for me to get soft edges. I mean, hard edges uh, because I'm not, I'm not letting it dry enough. So I have to watch that. And then if I feel like I'm getting too tight, if I feel like I'm getting too tight, then um, oftentimes I will use spatter to loosen up.
So this Raku pot has so many colors in it. Um, but the photograph is kind of dead, you know, it's, it's not great. So I'm looking to exaggerate what's in the pot versus Um, versus what the photograph looks like. The photograph is only a starting point, as you probably know. So Leslie, when you spatter, um, mm -hmm. do you do it with a, a lot of water in your brush, a little water? How, what can you tell us about the spattering? Well, just like right, what I just did like this, it's got a sizable amount of water in the brush. And I don't know if you're trying to paint along with me. That might be kind of hard. But I, I, I'm, I'm trying to be tuned into the values, um, you know, and noting what's next to where I'm painting. So I just did that, that cerulean blue. And now I'm going to go in and find uh, a hard, a hard darkness so that it has a neighbor. Ah, you nice. see how you're always looking for neighbors. I'm always looking for neighbors. What 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 a neighbor can do, and um, and so I'm always kind of looking. Also, I'm kind of looking at how much activity I have going on in the hole, even though I'm looking at the um, at even though I'm painting a little portion of it. So now if I see here, I'm, I'm placing this hard edge here, but it's going to have to give way to a soft edge in the shadow, in the shadow shape out here. So I'm you talk a little bit. Can there. you talk a little bit more about what you mean by a neighbor? I missed that. Uh, a neighboring shape. Ah. A neighboring shape. So so like you see i just i just made this a soft transition for two shapes mm -hmm. and this is a hard hard contrast these hard contrasted edges as um as i work through this hard contrasted edges are 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 wonderful but i i i need to i need to analyze the the shapes in order to have both lost and found. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for the question. Mm -hmm. And Leslie, I, I, I remember um, taking your classes and I felt like that was one of the most Im important and useful points that you made um, is the idea of the hard and soft edges or, or lost and found edges. How well, you know where I got that. The eye. You know where I got that, don't you? Well, I could probably guess. It might have to do with a certain painter named Charles. Charles Reed. Yeah. Okay. I took over 30 workshops with him in various areas of the United States and abroad. Wow. Over a period of how many years, Leslie? Oh, um, 30 at least. Oh, okay. So you would take about one a year maybe, huh? Yeah, one or two. So now it, it, what I'm trying for, what I'm trying for is to have enough um, pigment in this shadow shape so that it has a home with its neighbor. So that there's not too much contrast there. Yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah. So it's, you see how, how in this location here in the photograph, you see how this is obscured? Yes. Okay, so I look for areas that are obscure and then and then uh, uh, and then I try to find um, areas that are are found 
as opposed to lost or obscure. So if, if I'm looking at this um, cloth down here, and you can see that I'm just working next to adjacently to where I've been before. And, and whatever I happen to notice is where I'm gonna go. And so I think that that simplifies the problem. I think that simplifies um, the, the um, decision process. Leslie, is this something similar that we'll be doing in the workshop? Oh yeah, I always use this. I always do this. I, but, I mean, um, subject matter? Oh yeah, I'll probably do some still life, maybe more complex than this because I only have an hour and a half to do this. So I can't emphasize more um, the use of um, your, your thought process. Your thought process drives um, drive, drives my choices about what I'm doing next. And, and I guess maybe that's pretty common, but um, but I'm not. Um, but you know, to me, it's daunting if you have a whole thing that you're trying to paint and you're thinking about the whole thing at one time then I can't, I, I, I have a hard time concentrating on that. Go out of the paper. Make some escapes out of the paper. I think I'll go down here now. Always going adjacent to whatever I painted before um, or adjacent to what I paint, painted recently or before. Now I want to heighten the color up here. So I, that's just pure cad yellow orange. And then I'll punctuate that with with some darks. Lovely darks, you see? They're, they're very saturated, not a lot of water. Just to kind of get an idea of, you know, just to get a, the flavor of this raku pot and its glazes. And then there's some whites that punctuate that punctuate it that I'll continue with and just work it until I think I've got enough. I think I'll go down to the tomato now. And for the tomato, I'm going to use a uh, cad red light and carmine. So the carmine is a cool red and the cad red light is a warm red. And so the tomato is kind of halfway in between. So I'm just going to see if that color works. So I just tried it out on the edge, a hard edge, and then back to here. You know, this, this, this um, way of that I, I got used to painting years ago is is I think really um, it's an immediate it's an immediate pleasure that you get from um, a, a direct painting approach. Now a lot of you don't do this, and I'm not saying you should, but um, but it is just one way of doing it. Other people are very successful with a uh, layered approach. 
now for this, um, this tomato, I see down here, there's some a little bit of reflected light. So that tomato has a soft transition into it's uh, the soft transition that I might want to use. So that's a little too big. I'm also using Viva towels. The Viva towel is great for removing paint. What is it about Viva that uh, you like that better? It, than it, it has no pattern. Ah, okay, that makes sense. I think I really want a little bit more of a blue in that shadow. A little cerulean. And then I'll close the gap. With more paint. Then I'll go down into the shadow shape. Maybe a, a raw sienna and uh, carmine. I mean, more raw sienna and um, cerulean. And fuzz that out, maybe. So what am I going to do with the rest of this down here? I guess I better decide what to do with it now. So, so um, one of our um, one of our audience would like to know how often you're dipping into water. Oh, good question. Great question. Hang on just a second. Let me get this dark down here. Um, okay. It, I, I'm in the water, and one of the things that's really important that I think is very important is water, towel, paint, paper. If you go water paint, then you all then you have too much. You have too much. Whoops. You have too much. Um, you go water paint, you have too much, uh, too much water in the mix and you can't get a dark value. Right? So water, towel, paint, paper. And what number brush are you using there? Right now I'm using an eight and I should be using a 10. So why aren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, why not? Why, why not? Why, why not? Okay, I'm gonna switch to a 10. I love this brush. What kind of brush is that? This is a um, unaffordable brush. <laughs> Kalinsky yeah, Sable. Kalinsky Sable. And um, it has a wonderful point. It's a Da Vinci Maestro, Da Vinci Maestro Series 35. And uh, you can hardly get them now. I just got this one though. Why, why are they not available? Well, because the little Kalinsky, little Kalinsky um, animals. animals are in Russia. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So it's a supply chain problem. 
Oh. Huh. I think it might be more complex than that. Okay, so let's get, let's go up. So if I'm going to go up, I really like this little weed that comes up here. And I'll just come up. And I like these other weeds. And so I'm just drawing with my brush. <clears throat> and um, do you change the way you hold your brush when you're making various different kinds oh, of strokes? Absolutely change it. Like you can see now, I'm going to draw, I'm going to, I'm going to address some of these red berries. So you can see that, that I'm using, here's this red again, and more red. So I'm using it kind of like a pencil now, but then when I, I, if I, if I go into some of those stems that are really delicate, then uh, I'll use, use a free hand with a sketchy line and uh, just, just for variety's sake. You know, it's just variety that I'm interested in. So at this point, I want the variety. I want variety in the color of red that I'm using, the darkness of the red that I'm using, the lightness of the red, and, and trying to emulate those. And Leslie, what kind of paper are you using there? I'm using uh, um, Fabriano Artistico. Uh, and this is kind of a rough surface. It is a rough surface. I like using the rough surface because it gives some texture. Try not to use the tip of my brush. I'm trying to use the side of my brush hmm. um, because you'll ruin the tip. Mm. And I think I want some of these berries to be dark. Some of them. And what kind? Of, uh, what brand of paint do you like? Holbein. Holbein. Almost exclusively Holbein. And is Carmen similar to alizarin crimson? It is. It's much, it's almost the same. Okay. So I'm just looking, I, I, you know, I'm quickly looking back and forth. If you saw, see my head, it's moving quickly back and forth based upon where my brush is and it's anchored, my brush is anchored. And I gotta get some more of these reeds in here because it's getting too samey. So I'll use some. And I I like, you're not worried about getting exactly round berries? No, not at all. I couldn't if I wanted to.
Now, I think I need a little loosening up here. How much time do I have? Well, let's see. I'm getting a little nervous. This might be taking too long. You still have about an hour. Oh, good. Okay. So now, also, I will contend, I, I will be contending with the background. And uh, that's an interesting uh, problem because these these reeds and everything are you know hard edged against uh, a dry piece of paper and what I will do is is um, I, I like the background I like the background shades but I, I won't make it a smooth I don't intend to make it a smooth transition, but at least some indications of the background. Leslie, someone would like to know um, how the spattering helps you. It loosens me up. Okay. You know, um, people um, think that, you know, you see individual berries and individual uh, um, individual lines here, weeds. These are just weeds. And um, and what what is really you know I think to get the flavor of uh, to get the flavor of of it, you I think you need to. Um, let 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 some of this go. Let it go. Let it go into um, um, more of a free a free free result. As long as I don't develop too many tangents. Can you explain what you mean by a tangent? Yeah. Um, if if I if yeah, a tangent is you, you. Most of you probably know what a tangent is, but a tangent is something that is um, that forms forms a line. Like for instance, if you took a picture of a friend of yours that had a telephone pole going right up by the side of your head, that would be a tangent, and it would create way too much attention. So that's what tangents do. If it's adjacent to it and going in the same direction, then um, you run the risk of, of, um, of attracting too much attention because of the relationship. that you're sick of looking at berries. One thing that spatter does is it lets, it lets the viewer um, rest instead of be controlled by um, too many shapes. Hmm. Um, so, so, you know, uh, I mean, this is just, you know, see what, let's see here if I can do better than this. So yes, to do spatter, you have to have a quite a bit of, you have to have quite a bit of water in your brush. And so if I just said, well, okay, I'll do a little bit more of that. It's kind of like a hockey stick. 
I mean, a hockey stop or, um, or, a, um, or a, a volley on the tennis court. It's a quick, quick, um, So it causes it 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 allows you to kind of loosen up basically. It's texture. Yeah, it's texture. And that's one of the elements of design. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm just gonna take and remove a few of these spatters out here. It's funny, I remember um, seeing uh, one of my teachers take a painting that a student had done that looked very detailed and uptight, and she just added a few spatters to it, and all of a sudden, it looked great. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, uh, Charles Reed used a lot of spatter, you know. Is that right? Oh, yeah. And I asked him why he did that. And he, he would always say, well, I needed to loosen up. <laughs> so let me go away from this and let this dry a little bit and then um, Maybe I'll go into a little bit more of a shadow shape behind because I'm working all in the positive and I want to work in the negative too, you know. Hmm. That's just pure cerulean blue. Maybe a little bit of a lost edge here. Any other questions? How do you know when it's time to stop? Good question. I think when, uh, when nothing is helping. Mm. Does that make sense? I think it's so. not getting any better.
sometimes I hold my brush upside down. Sometimes it's easy, you know, I hold it the way it needs to be held so that I get the right um, <clears throat> so I get the right angle. Maybe a little more dark. Um, we have a, uh, somebody would like to know if you put out fresh paint every time. Um, I do, pretty much I do. Um, um, before I teach my classes, I end up having to um, see see this right here. I mean, this is what I've got so far. And you can see that uh, the, the um, raw sienna is, is, is getting used mostly. Um, but there's others that are also being used. Uh, so I need to add paint almost every day that I teach a class, almost every day. Do you find you like working with the juicy um, wet paint right out of the tube best? Oh, yes, absolutely. You know, you've got to have, um, um, you know, it has to be, it has to be, um, It has to be juicy paint. Otherwise, you can't get enough paint on it if it's dried out. Okay, I'm just going to see if I don't know how this is going to happen. I use my fingernail a lot. So that's a warm color, that's carmine. And maybe a little more. <clears throat> but I don't wanna to do too much with that until I go and cool it off with some blue. Mixing the blue on the paper. And maybe a little bit um, more of a blue up here. You might be asking, well, aren't you afraid of it mixing, you know, getting mushy with what I've already painted? Mm -hmm. 
And yeah, I have to say that that's a concern. So I try to use a light hand. And some people would probably ask, well, how come you didn't put it down to begin with and just work with it that way? And I, I'd say, well, because then I've got a tone on the paper and I might want to use, I w might want to leave it white in some areas. Mm -hmm. So it's a hard decision to make whether or not to tone it first or tone it last. Isn't that difficult? Mm -hmm. So it gives you more flexibility. It does, I think it does. So I really wanted to leave this, um, to uh, let this dry uh, a, a little bit. Then I might go back into it. I might go back into it after I do this wash. But I think it just, you know, this this tone that I'm using just kind of, um, it gives it a, um, it gives the bit, it gives the the weeds a home. Mm -hmm. So I'm just using cerulean and carmine, and a lot of water. I take it, and a lot of water, absolutely a lot of water. Do you want to show us your palette again, maybe? Oh. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, mix, it's, they're mixing I'm together using right in there. A ton yeah. of water. And the good thing about these brushes is that they hold a lot of water. Synthetic brushes don't. So it's harder to use them. Ah because they don't hold enough water in paint. I'll probably go back into this if there's time. Yeah, you still have uh, 45 minutes. Okay. Now also some of these, um, I'll go right over that shadow. That's beautiful. Thank you. I, I really would look like to have left a little bit more light. But that's, I can get it back. Look at that. I got it back. Well, I got it back somewhat. Not totally. What about the drip on the lower left side that goes straight down? Are you going to do anything? Yeah. Well, it's all right. It's fine. And this, this is a drip too, you know. Hmm. But I don't think it's, that's, it's not that bad. So to take your reference photo, how did you set that up? 
there's some fabric under the pot or yes yes fabric and you kind of scrunched it up so it would have some yeah, wrinkles just, to it just some pattern like you know you just reminded me that i have this pattern you know it's, it's a little napkin that has a pattern in it huh. oh you can't see it Oh, I so see. I just, you know, I'm just, just playing around with some shapes. Yeah. Um, um, and, and maybe, maybe just a little bit of other pattern. What does the painting need? That's what, that's what I'm always asking myself is, is what more does the painting need to, to be uh, impactful, to have an impact on the viewer? So, you know, in looking at how shapes relate to each other, I might say, well, that looks all right. Um, but I, I, I can't plan this out in advance. I have to look at what I've done in order to see where it needs to go. And that, doesn't that seem kind of odd? No. It's good That's... to me. So I went to the water and to my towel and the motion on the towel is like this. If I have the water in my little bucket and then the towel, one, two, three, and it's still got plenty of water in the belly of the brush. Hmm. The terry cloth what towel? Uh, this is a automotive towel. Oh. Yeah, terry cloth would work. So if you don't get enough water out of your out of your brush, then you don't you, you lose control. Let's just do a little bit of you no, know, I really. I think that we need a little bit more of um, activity on one side versus the other. Because otherwise, if it's the same activity on one side as the other, then it becomes boring. So if I make some areas more filled up and other areas more open, then I think that that can help position. But then if you'd make one too, if you do too much of that, then it can become unbalanced, right? Yeah, but imbalance works. I like imbalance. I like having uh, unequal sides. Unequal distributions. Of activity. Barbara would like to know if you if you usually paint in vertical or you're just doing that for tonight's demo. I always paint vertical. Always. And I think it's better to do vertical because then the, the, the water doesn't pool 
And so you have less problems with um, okay. um yeah, with with uh, balloons. How about a little? Leslie, will you go over your concept of some, a little, and a lot? Oh yeah, for sure. So a little, some, and a lot. I use that. Um, you know, I think it's a great concept. I use it all the time. So. If I have an uneven distribution of things, anything, um, some of something, a little of something. So if I have a lot of something on one side, then I'll do a little of something on another side. Um, let's see, how can I describe that more? Um, uh, it, it goes in, into values as well. So if I have um, distribution, even distributions of darks, lights, and midtones that are evenly distributed, then the painting becomes boring, I think. And if I get an uneven distribution, of activity, such as this has a different level of activity than this does. If this had the same amount of activity then as that, then it would be boring. So, so, um, so I'm constantly trying to mix up a little sum and a lot, a little um, in an area some in an area and a lot in an area, in another area. I don't know if I was being clear. A little, some, and a lot. Leslie, do you do other mediums besides watercolor? Uh, not often, but I use the same um, kind of, um, I, I love doing oil paintings. They just take too long to dry. But I, I use the same concepts in an oil or any other, you know, but I don't do that very often. I seem to recall you're doing a mural somewhere. Oh yeah, I did. A what, couple of them. What kind of what kind of paint do you use for that? Wall paint. Okay. Now, when I'm trying to make a decision on what to do next, I have to look at what I have. And um, I was thinking that maybe I would want to put a tone of some sort in here. But then I was thinking, well, okay, if I use blue, then that's just a repeat of this. And so maybe I should just leave that alone. So 
so uh, you know, it, I I like to think of what what would I like to try and envision what would make the painting better, a little more strength in the shadow, maybe. And if I if I if I did a, a little bit of a different tone down here, that might be all right. Now I really think that this is um, is is skewed because of the camera angle. And I'm sorry about that because this is 11 by 15, but it looks like it's pretty square instead of rectangular. So I'm just putting down pigment, trying to mix things up so that there's uh, hopefully an interesting array of, of um, surprises. Leslie Ingrid says, I love how you teach and you are a wonderful artist. So beautiful. Oh, wow. thank you, Ingrid. Well, I've been teaching quite a while. Mm -hmm. Why did I do that? Somebody tell me. What did you do? This. This. Ah, connecting some of the uh, shapes to the shadow. Uh, well, that's a good answer. I did it so that it wouldn't be the same as the other side. Mm -hmm. um, so somebody's asking how uh, would you frame this as you don't use clean edges? Clean edges. Um, I would frame this as um, what I normally do is I would um, I would um, cut the mat so that it's a quarter inch on each side. A quarter inch. A co so, quarter inch overlap, you're saying? Yes. Okay. So it's hardly even a materialistic. It's it's just it would just the mat would come just a quarter inch from the side of the paper all the way around. Mm -hmm. And so these ragged edges and everything are, are obscured, they're, they're fine. So is that a half sheet? No, this is a quarter sheet. It's a 11 sheet. by 15. Oh, okay.
Okay, I think we're getting about done here. And you don't uh, pre-stretch your paper. No. I can hear people talking. I mean, I think I can, I can't hear you talking, but I can hear them saying, Leslie, you're done. Quit. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't me. <laughs> See, now I don't think that did anything. Because what it did is it made it too similar over there. So I'm going to get rid of it. Okay. So, so, so I think that, that managing the, um, what, what we were talking about, a little sum and a lot, managing a little sum and a lot. Um, so you see that this area over here has a lot of activity. Mm -hmm. This area has no activity. This area has activity of red and some spatter all kinds of opportunities for freedom and freedom and expression in those areas, okay? This is not. So, so when you talk about a little, some, and a lot, then I think you have to mix up how filled up areas are um, and a little, some, and a lot can come, can be applied to the sizes of shapes, big, small, and medium, um, the uh, warm and cool, how much warm, how much cool, um, use of line, use of texture, um, you know, all of those um, er elements of design I see Carol Hus Husslein put the brushes. What did she say? Oh, okay. The artists have said, put the brushes down and back away from the paper. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess what I could do is huh. back away from the paper by going this way. You know, <laughs> you know that old thing about how many people does it take to paint a watercolor? Two. One to paint it and the other one to take away his brushes before he messes it up. Yeah. Well, one thing that one nice. thing that I see that is not cool about this painting that I see because I look at it from afar, okay, is that I've got uh, two parallel lines here. So, so I have to find a way to obscure that or change it so that 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 repetition doesn't. Okay, move your brush right because your hand is kind of right over it. So I can't oh, see yeah. what you're talking about. Okay, so I had a I had a a a a, a line here, okay. linear shape here, and a linear shape here that talk to each other. Oh. Okay. So when I'm always looking for traps that I I fall into, and therefore, I just obscured that little repetition that I didn't like. Hmm. It's still there. That's good enough. Okay. Mm hmm Oh, David Salviano always says that. What does David Salviano say? Like other artists have said, put the brushes down and back away from the paper. 
Okay. David Saviano always says that. Oh, okay. Well, I think that means that I've gotten enough hints <laughs> in, the, in the audience here that says, no, no, wait, wait, wait. There's always more. There's always <laughs> more. I think this needs a little strength up here. Oh. And Carol says that some folks tape around the edge so there's a clean edge. That can be quite restrictive when you are matting since you can make more adjustments without the clean edge. True. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we're done. Okay, here's a question for you, Leslie. Mm -hmm. um, do you purposely try to make the bigger shapes lower down? Like in this case, it sort of weights down the pot, that the weight of it means that you make bigger, darker shapes down below? No. I would look at, um, I, I would look at, um, the, the darker shapes can be down below because down below because I think that then they are in shade. Mm -hmm. And that might equate to the question. But um, you know, I look for I look for areas. Um, you see, if this had been really light in here instead of dark, uh -huh. then it would have meant that the light was shining on it. Okay. Whereas obviously the light is coming from up here and going this way. So if the bottom of that vase had been light, like the like the light was shining on it, then wouldn't it have taken like a shadow un underneath it to kind of make that pop? It's hard to say, Michelle, because <clears throat> everything about light is um you know, it depends. Sometimes if, if it's in strong light, I would probably say I'd leave it light. Uh -huh. But um, I, I think that that um, looking from where the light is coming from and where it is going um, gives you gives you a sense of volume. So, okay. Yes. So so, you know, just like if you were doing a portrait, then, uh, and the, the light would be shining on, say, you know, um, directly, the light is shining on my face this way. But, um, you know, the, the, um, the shadows um, under, under my neck, which I don't want you to look at, um, <laughs> are um uh, you know they the the light and shade describes the form okay light and shade describe the form so obviously there's shade over here and it's and and shade is is um it, n not high contrast between shapes whereas you have high contrast in shapes where the light is brightest and the light would be shining here too. And you just scratched with your fingernail on the tomato to make the highlight, is that right? Yes. Oh, wait, I forgot. I forgot the stem. Oh my God, how could I have done that? I was gonna ask about that little stem. Yeah, look. And then it's got a little hair on the side too. So you can't really see it. No, <laughs> you can. There. Okay. <laughs> Are there some darker linear marks on the Raku pot? Sort of calligraphic marks? Oh yeah, there's calligraphic marks everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think I ought to put them on? Maybe. 
Maybe. All right. Well, Carol, Carol told me I needed to put the paintbrush down. Yeah, but she wasn't talking about the calligraphic marks. <laughs> <laughs> I think calligraphic marks are, are wonderful, actually. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, better. Nice painting. So, you know, really, this is just, just me. I, I'm just one person, one voice. And um, um, I just delight in, I just delight in, in giving the viewer some surprises. Um, you know, these, these marks that I put over here are, are not, not there in the photograph, but I think they add to the design. Mm -hmm. And so nature and the camera doesn't always work in your favor. Um, and so, so it's up to, it's up to us to say, you know, can I exaggerate the light? Can I exaggerate the shade? Can exaggerate I, the shade? Can I, you know? Um, well, uh, uh, as, as, as Sheila as mentions she in the chat, chat um, the painting is so much more dynamic than the photo. The photo. That's the way it That's should be. That's the way it should be. Good. Good. What time is it? What time is it? Oh, it's oh, it's, it, it's uh, it, quarter it, to ten. Quarter to ten. No, quarter to nine. I'm sorry, quarter to nine. It's quarter to ten <laughs> in Idaho. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you, Ted. Thank you for this. Thank you for this demo, Leslie. It was a lot in a short amount of time, lots of good hints and tips. For CWA, I've enjoyed these demos online tremendously, and I hope we continue to have them. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you. Beautiful. Thanks, Anna. Bravo. Leslie, I came in late, so uh -huh. I was just hoping I would catch you. What I really like about this picture, too, is that nice light uh, shape, shape. That's the background, the background shape. shape. Yeah. Yeah. And Thank you. It's sort of, ex it's pretty exciting. So, so, and I also like yeah. the way you carried the, um, the plants to the edge uh, on that side, to the edge of the paper. I think that's really, yeah. you know, it, yeah. it's just wonderful. It just looks like it's sort of. The whole thing just kind of landed there from heaven, you know? <laughs> oh, that's better. So anybody who'd like to see more of Leslie's work, we do have her demo from last year up on our YouTube, and uh, that's available for everybody. I just put a link to it in the chat. You can copy it from the chat and, uh, and paste it into your browser. And we still have some space in the workshop. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Um, okay, well, thank you so much, Leslie, for um, showing us your amazing style tonight. And um, I always love watching you paint and learning from you. And I know um, many others who do too. Do so, you want me to, um, Joe, or, or uh, do you want me to um, um, prepare this in Photoshop? sign it and email it to you? Yes, and I will include it in the video that we'll put up on uh, on, on uh, YouTube. Okay. Good, because it, the proportions of the, like I was saying, the proportions of the paper are not very well represented in the camera view okay. that I have. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot taller than it is showing here this is almost square but it's not square that's a great idea yeah that'd be great that'd be great leslie you sent us the reference photo right i sent you the rest of, yeah you have the reference photo okay good i'll include that in the video as well 
Oh, wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Okay. I'll email, I'll email this to you. Thank you. No rush. Okay. All right. Thank you and good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thanks for a great meeting.